Just lift up those hearts before God. And I just want you to take a moment and just tell God that you are here. Just tell God that you came to this service today. And just tell God to remember you and to speak to you. Tell God to give you revelation even as the word of God goes forth. Tell God to bring healing over your body. Tell God to bring healing over your soul. Tell God to enlarge you with the power of his word. Tell God to speak to you. Like pray in the mighty name of Jesus that this if any distraction or anything that can take you away from the moment that God want to have with you. Right now, I rebuke that moment in the mighty name of Jesus. But I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that there will be a moment that God will speak to you. That you will not miss the time of visitation. That you will not miss when the Lord is whispering to you. That you will not miss when the Lord is giving you that revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I release myself unto you. I pray that God, I will be the first of that God you use so that you can speak to somebody's spirit, oh God. So Father, we release ourselves unto you. You. We release our souls unto you. We release our bodies unto you. I pray that this sanctuary Jehovah God will bring life. I pray that this sanctuary Jehovah God will connect with somebody's situation. I pray that this sanctuary Jehovah God will bring life and will bring fire to somebody. For we pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Somebody give God praise one more time. Amen. And we may sit down in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I was sitting down there, and before I was preparing for my message, I was remembering about something that happened maybe over 12 or 13 years ago. One time I was invited by one of the guys from Kenya. He was graduating in UC Berkeley. And um, Sister Mary know that guy, so I think I met him through Sister Mary. So this guy, he was graduating, and he told me he was doing PhD in one of those crazy science things. I can't even remember what it was for, but it was a good one. So he invited me to go and speak in his graduation and also bless them. And so when I went there, that is one of the meetings that I will never forget because in my entire way of preaching, as soon as I landed there, the room was filled with the people, PhD people, some of the people that have never even heard about Jesus Christ. And as soon as I stood to introduce myself, and I said, my name is Pastor Moro, and I'm going to you know, speak for a few minutes, and I said, the Bible says, and I read the first verse, before I finished the first heart, there was a heart on the air. And the guy said, what does that mean? Who said that? And then I just answered gracefully. And then after that, after two minutes before I continue with the leading of the word, and then I saw another heart over there. And the guy asked me, what do you mean? Like, how did this happen? And I'm talking to the PhD students. I'm talking to people who have just graduated in every area of science. And by God's grace, I answered it gracefully. And then before I even go to the third line, another heart came on the air. And I was like, God, now Jehovah, what am I going to do? How? I've never been talking about preaching in a group like this one. And I went ahead and I just answered it. And by the time I'm going to the fourth one, now I took the command of the stage. And I just continued to preach. And I continued to preach. And the people that were raising their hand now, I saw them now, their eyes were attentive. By the time I was finishing my 45 minutes, and I called them, they were all coming for me to pray for them. And they were all shouting. They were all trying to just say, God, we've never seen a sack of people. Clearly, when I talk to them, they have never heard about Jesus ever in their life. Simply because some come from different faith, some come from different times who never even believed in anything. And to them, it was something that was igniting their spirit. And so when the Lord was teaching me that, I was, uh, you know, so when the Lord was remembering, reminding me of that one, he reminded me of the moment that God presented to me and you so that you can be a blessing to somebody out there. And sometimes we don't even see those moments. Sometimes we don't even feel those moments. Sometimes the devil comes and just put a failure in us and we miss the moment. 
Hallelujah. And I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, do not miss the moment. Hallelujah. So do not miss the moment. So the title of my message today is amazing because today is Men's Sunday. And um, I'm going to connect with what I've just said here today. Because from the book of First Chronicles, chapter number 12, if you start from verse number 23, I'm going to teach you something about not missing the moment. Because times comes when God presents a moment to you. God brings an opportunity in your life. And there are times that we miss that moment. And then when we miss the moment, then we go back again after 10 years, after 15 years, and then you are still wondering about what happened to the moment. The Bible talks about the verse from the first Chronicles chapter number 12 and verse number 23. If you can put, uh, uh, let me see, 32. Go to 32 so that now I can be able to help you from 23 what it means. Um, hallelujah. Okay, the Bible says, yeah, over there. The Bible says, and the children of Issachar, which were men that had understandings of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200, and their brethren were at their commandment. Praise the Lord. I wanted to read that scripture, then I can help you to understand why that is important. So I want you to start from verse number 23 now. We go back to 23 so that now we can come to 32. So 23, and these are the numbers of the birds that were leading armed to the war and came to the David uh, to David to Hebron to turn the kingdom of Saul to him according to the word of the Lord. Let's continue 24. The children of Judah that bear shield and spear was 6,800 lady armed to war. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the other one. And of the children of Simeon, the mighty men of valor for the war was 7,100. Praise the Lord. And I don't want to continue to read because by the time I finish and go to 532, everybody will be sleeping. But what is important for you to understand is the group of men that went to the war at Hebron. There are some wars that David was fighting. One was Siklag, but then there's another one that was in Hebron that is not well known. But what happened at this war of Hebron, we see from the fact that we started 23, that the number of men that were released were many. One of them were talking about 1,000 plus. The other one was 700 plus. But now when we come to verse number 32, there's a small tribe by the name of Isaac. I'm not talking about Isaac, but I'm talking about Isaac. There was a small tribe. And the Bible says that of them, they were only sent about 200 men. They were very small in the number of men that they sent. But that's not the most important. The thing is, the Bible talks about them and the children of Isaac, which were men that had great understanding. Somebody underlined that word. They were men with great understanding. Hallelujah. Let's tell your neighbor, there were men with great understanding. Those were sons of Isaac. There were not many in number. But what they had, they were men with great understanding. And when I talk about men, I don't want our sisters to be left behind today. Because when I'm talking about men, I'm not talking about gender. I'm talking about people with great understanding. Hallelujah. Now, they were able to understand the times and the season. If you can write that down, that will help somebody in the time and the season that we are in. They were men of great understanding and they were able to understand or to discern times and season. Let me repeat it again for somebody. They were men with great understanding and they were able to discern or to understand the times and the season. 
Hallelujah. They were able to understand the times and the season. So they were able to discern. They knew what Israel needed to have. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that they were also able to align themselves. Very important. Not only understand the time and the season, but also they were able to align themselves with the time and the season of God. And I think we can go home. We as men of understanding, if everybody in this church who is listening to me today, if you can have understanding of time and season, if then you are able to align yourself with the vision of God, let me tell you, we'll be looking for you. We won't even see you because you'll be gone far. Hallelujah. And now we'll see those people who are able to understand the time and the season? Um, I'll tell you what times and season means. What this really was meaning, when we talk about the times and season, there are two words that I've said here before, but I want to repeat it so that I can attach with this one preaching today. There's something that we call chronos. Chronos, when we talk about time. Chronos. That is C-H-R-O-N-O-S. That when we define time, we define time as chronos. And chronos is quantitative measurement of time. And that is the time like the one that we have in the crocs, the one that you have at your watch, the moon faces, those who do the moon face. So those are what we call quantitative measurement of time is what we call chronos time. And this is a Greek word, which also meant to derive from the Greek god of time. That's why it's called Chronos, it was a Greek god of time. And so what we do, sometimes as human beings, we feel like we are running out of time. And the time that we feel like we are constantly looking for and learning for is the Chronos amount of time. That's why some people come and tell you that at your age you're supposed to have achieved this, at this time you're supposed to be here. When people look at you, they measure you with the Chronos time. And so as human beings, we also feel it because you look at the time that you have wasted, you look at the quantity of the time. You look at the time that has supposed to achieve this, the time that you're supposed to be in school, the time that you're supposed to have money, the time that you're supposed to start family, the time, time, time. You look at the quality, you know, the number or the level of the time that is what we call chronos. And that's a mean that chronos is not important, but God give us chronos so that we can be able to plan ourselves. Hallelujah. So we feel like constantly running out of time. We are running out of time. That is what we call chronos. But then there's also another time that is called kairos. And that is K-A-I-R-O-S. And the kairos is also an ancient Greek word. And this will now refer to quality of the time. So you see, the Chronos is the quantity. But now when we call about the kairos is now the quality of the time. So it means it is the appointed time. It is called deep time. That is chronos. And uh, that kairos. And kairos is also a movement. And that's why when God comes, you cannot want to miss the kairos movement. The time of visitation is what we call Kairos movement. When we come to church, there's the Kronos time that we say that the service starts from this time to this time. That is Kronos time. There's the Kronos time that we know that we meet on a Sunday. There's a Kronos time that you know that we have that all the time that we meet. But then there's the most important that is called the Kairos time. And the Kairos time is when you are in the Kronos time, and then the Kairos time is when God come and visit you. Maybe the preaching is going on, and that becomes your Kairos time, when God come and speak something and trigger something in you. The Kairos time is when the worship is going on, and everybody is worshiping, but for you, you experience a moment, you lift up your heart, heavens open, and God starts speaking to you. 
Do not miss your Kairos moment. Hallelujah. The Kairos moment is when a child comes here and see a memory first, and that memory first is something that you have had for so many years, but God come and bring a different revelation over your life. And that is what we call Kairos time. A kind of time is when you're in the service and you came with so many things in your mind and God just come and you just feel a relief in your spirit. Hallelujah. Yeah. Kind of moment. Kind of moment is a moment of visitation. It is a moment that God works with. And let me tell you, church, you see, he use your chronos moment to prepare for kind of moment. Hallelujah. Like I was saying here when I was talking about Brother Alex, I was saying he has been using his Kronos moment for preparing. And the time comes for Kairos moment is when God gives you an opportunity for you to do something and that becomes your Kairos moment. Hallelujah. Amen. Our sister, maybe you are a worshiper. How do you use your Kronos moment? You use your Kronos moment in your separate places just writing songs. You don't even have a place to present them, but just keep lighting them. You use your chronos moment when God gave you revelation at night. Don't just wake up and just assume it. Just write it down because that's your chronos moment. Maybe you are there and God wakes you up 2 a.m. at night to pray. God gives you a word. Don't just ignore it. Just write it down because those are chronos moment. And God uses the chronos moment to prepare you. Because when the time of your Kairos moment comes, the Kairos moment will not be the time for you to come and prepare yourself over here in this pulpit. The Kairos moment will not be the time for you to come and rehearse. The Kairos moment is not the time that you go to tell the king, I thought um, you said this or thought this is how it's supposed to be. When you come to the Kairos moment, it is the time that you go before the king and you present your need and they look at you and they know that this man is prepared. Hallelujah. Kairos moment, the Bible talks about, I'll give you an example of Kairos moment. The Bible talks about somebody like Joseph. Joseph was sold by his brothers. And the brothers, when they sold him, it was just a Kairos moment for him. He spent his time in a prison. But guess what he was doing in the prison? He did not spend his lifetime lamenting and complaining about his brothers. The brother had a revelation that one time God will come for him. And the Bible says that through the dream that was the gift that was given unto him, when his kindness moment came and the who was presented before the king, and everybody was watching what he gonna do. When he went before the king, he said, King, may you live forever. And he said, the dream that you had, king, he said, this is what it means, and this is what gonna happen. Hallelujah. Because his Kairos movement was there. He used his Kairos movement to prepare for his Kairos movement. JICC, you've been here for 12 years. That has been your Kairos movement. Hallelujah. And you cannot be here just with the Kairos moment. Just prepare for your Kairos moment because your Kairos moment is coming. Hallelujah. What will happen if somebody come here that is, you know, sick, somebody that need healing? Are you going to start here and start asking, where is Pastor Guru? What's going to happen? You see, you've been here for 12 years. God wants you when you come to your Kairos moment, you can lay hands on them and cast out those demons in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. That will be your Kairos moment. Hallelujah. Your Kairos moment is when you go before the king and you can be able to deliver. Hallelujah. The Kairos moment in the Bible, I can give you another example. Is a man in the book, uh, is the man in the book of Mark, chapter number 10 and verse number 46. The Bible says that there's a blind man by the name of Bartimaeus. And some people call him uh, son of, uh, Bartimaeus means son of Timaeus. So Bartimaeus, he was blind and he knew that Jesus was passing by Jericho. Let me tell you. When he heard that Jesus was passing by, he said that this is my time. 
This is my kairos moment. That the disciples were even telling him to keep quiet. But when but my heart Jesus was coming, he started shouting and saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. That was his first shout. And as I told you last Sunday, the disciples, and what I call the church folks, told him, slow down. Don't shout. You are disturbing the king. You can't do that. You can pray in new tongues. You can fast for four days or five days. You can't do this. You can't be in the church. You can't do that. You can't give that amount. You see the church folks. Silence. Silence. You can't be spending all your times in the church. They were there telling you. But the Bible says that the man, he was blind. He continued, the more they were sending him, the more he continued shouting more. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. And the Bible, this was now his kairos moment. The moment of meditation was here. Jesus was already in the vicinity. He knew that if I miss this moment, he knew that Jesus will not come back this way again because by that time of the Jericho, Jesus was going to the cross. So he knew that if I miss this moment, I don't know when I'm going to see this moment again now. Hallelujah. Is there somebody here at JSCC that I'm saying at this 12th year, this is my moment. This is my Kairos moment and I cannot miss this moment anymore. Hallelujah. I don't care who's going to silence me, but I cannot miss this moment anymore. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together and give God praise? And the Bible says that when he shouted, he got Jesus' attention and Jesus came and healed him. And the same people that were telling him to be silenced, <laughs> the same people that were telling him, I knew he would heal you, I knew he would deliver you, I knew. You see, that now that tells me when you have in your kind of moment, Please do not listen to us. Because one day we'll tell you this. But after you succeed, we'll be the same people that will be telling you, I knew, I believe in you. I know you can do it. You see, I knew it. So the thing is, when you're in your kairos movement, just live in your kairos movement. Hallelujah. That's how it works. Amen. That's how it works. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor, I'm going to tell you, you cannot preach. Just tell me, you know, watch me. Hallelujah. Because I know my movement is coming. I'm in the chaos movement. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know about King David. He, called, he killed Christ. Amen. But you see, that for us, we know about the chaos movement. When everybody celebrated him with the slain of King Uriah. But that was not his story. That was his glory. His story began a long time ago. When even when he was rejected at the time of being anointed. Because when Samuel went to Jesse's house to anoint. All the other brothers were presented. And he was forgotten over there. Tending the flock. And even Samuel said, is there any other one? Oh, yeah, there's a, another one. <laughs> there's a, you see that? Not even, not yes, we have, oh, yeah, 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 we have another one. I don't know how he's spent right now because he is with the frogs over there. I don't know, he's not dressed up like the other guys over here. His statue, he doesn't look like the other, he doesn't have the king's statue. He doesn't look like. When I look at him, I don't see him like a king. But I say, can you please pray me? When he was brought, the Bible says that Jesus God said, This is him. Anoint him. And let me tell you something, church. When you hear the phrase that says that God does not look at the statues, but he looks at the heart. And when you hear that, David was after God's own heart. It was at this place that God looked at the heart of this young man. 
And he saw that this young man had a heart for God. And it doesn't matter what people saw him, but God saw something different in him. People may have looked at him differently, but God saw something in this young man. The Bible says that when he was anointed, he did not become the king the same day when he was anointed. He now started his chronos movement where he went out there and the Bible says that the bears will come and he will look at his brothers, his brothers are not there. And he will jump at the bear and tear the bear and kill the bear. Then the lion will come and the young man will look at his helpers, nobody is there. He will look at that and kill the lion because he was in his chronos movement. And his chronos movement was painful. He was alone. He was by himself. Nobody was helping him. But now the Bible says that when Goliath finally came and he was troubling the children of God, that David said, this is my chaos movement. And when he went there, the Bible says that when he looked at Goliath, there was a little of the memories of what the Lord has done for him during his chronos movement. He remembered how he was tearing the bears. He remembered how he was killing the lion. And he knew that his chaos movement is here and he, it is no way that he can miss Goliath. Hallelujah. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that somebody here at the sounding and the hearing of my voice will not miss your kindness movement. Do not be intimidated by the system. Do not be intimidated by the size of the giant because your kindness movement is here. Hallelujah. And when your kindness movement comes, you cannot miss it. Hallelujah. Your kindness movement is here. And you can't miss it. Hallelujah. So David knew his kairos movement. And from that time, everybody now started talking about David. Hallelujah. See, most of the time, we look for people to talk about us. Rather than looking for your kairos movement. When your kairos movement comes, you don't even need to look for people to talk about you. Because God will do it for you. Hallelujah. Let me give you another example of the Kairos movement. Hallelujah. We also talked last Sunday about the woman that had the issue of the blood. And when she heard that Jesus was also passing in the crowd, she knew that that was her Kairos movement. Hallelujah. Even though outside it didn't look like, even though her situation did not allow her to be in the crowd. She knew that her chaos movement is here and she knew that there is no way she can miss that movement because it was a movement of blessings. And that's why she pressed on and touched the hem of Jesus' garment and the virtue came out of Jesus. Why? Because the woman knew the power of chaos movement. Hallelujah. Amen. Is there anybody here in this house that is telling God that God, I know I have been in trouble for 12 years. I know I have looked for answers. I know of this situation that has bothered me. But now, God, this season that I'm in is the season of chaos movement, and I cannot miss it. Hallelujah. Let that be your prayer today. Tell God that you never want to miss that chaos movement. Hallelujah. Let me give you another example of chaos movement. Let's go to the book of John chapter number 4 and verse number 7. There's a Samaritan woman that was found at the well. And Jesus visited this woman at the well. And the Bible says that a woman of Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Hallelujah. So Jesus told the woman, give me a drink. Hallelujah. And now this was a kindness moment for her. When she was there, the first thing that woman said is, uh, you know, you know you are you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. How can we even borrow water from one another? 
And Jesus said that Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who said to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you the living water. Hallelujah. So that was a kairos moment because this woman had lived a life of trouble but when Jesus visited her he spoke a word and the word that Jesus spoke to her was that moment that woman connected with him, Jesus and now Jesus changed the situation for this woman because it was in her kairos moment that came that she has waited she had spent you know even she had spent a lot of time with other men and Jesus even Gave her the revelation of what her life was. And this woman, she knew that Jesus had come for her. This was her kairos moment. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that Jesus will find somebody at the well. With all your troubles and everything that has been going on. I pray that Jesus will find you. Another example of kairos moment is the pool of Bethesda. The Bible talks about there was a pool that was surrounded by 12 um, gates. And this uh, pool, the Bible talks about that at the appointed time, there's a time that the angel of the Lord used to come. In the book of John, chapter number 5 and verse number 4, it says that it is at the appointed time that angel will come and start the water. And the Bible says that when the angel came and started the water, the first person that would jump into the pool will receive their baby. And now it says that at that pool, there lay a great number of people that were sick, lame, all kinds of diseases and infirmities. And they were waiting there for that appointed time. So what we don't need and what we now we're talking about the Kairos movement, the appointed time, we don't know whether it was once a year, we don't know whether it was once in six months, we don't know exactly when it was. Because when you talk about the appointed time, it means it is just that time, it is the Kairos movement that the angel will come and start the water. And the thing is, the person that jumps in for the first time, will receive their healing. But there's a man that has stayed there for so many, you know, for 37 years. He was there at that pool. And the thing is, for you to be over 30 years in the pool, is a long time. For those kids who are here, I know there are people who are not even that here. That man had stayed for that long in that pool. And every time they appointed time, as I said, we don't know when. When they hear the water start and try to jump into the water, somebody else come in and that person misses their appointed moment. A family that eight years sitting there and the Bible says when Jesus came he asked this man do you want to be well? Let me show you something. When your Kairos moment comes if you have been so used to your situation for so long you tend to lie with your situation. Do you want to be healed? The man started the story. You know how long I've been here. Every time when I try to, you know, he was already, you know, like this, he was already a situation that he has accepted it. So Jesus said, Do you want to be healed? Ah, you don't understand how long I've been here. She don't know even my 15-year-old came here and received their healing and they left me here. And Jesus said, do you want to be healed? And Jesus said, you don't know how long I've been single. You don't know how my situation is. You don't know even the last time that I dated, they left me at the back. He <laughs> said, do you want? Say, you don't even understand that they broke me on the Facebook. I was reading the news. Jesus says, do you really want to be healed? Do you want to be well? 
You don't know how long I've been drinking. You don't know my condition. You don't understand that I've tried everything. I've talked to anybody. I've gone to any kind of counseling class in this situation. To me, I think it has this meant to be. But you see, that's how the enemy comes when you're in your chaos moment. He still continues to whisper to you. But the Bible says that this man, Jesus asked, do you want to be here? So when your chaos moment comes, Jesus comes and he's asking you, do you want to get well? Do you want? He doesn't have to use the formula of throwing you to the water. He can change your situation during the chaos moment. Hallelujah. He doesn't use to use the formula that is there. He doesn't have to use the system that is already set. That was the important moment. But when the chaos moment came for Jesus to visit this man, he was set free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I pray that somebody in this house today will be set free by the power of the gospel of Christ. Amen. So it is God who gives times and seasons. And now we come back to where I started. I told you that men of Isaac were men that were great understanding. They were able to understand the time and the season. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that somebody in this house today will be able to understand the time and the season.